the real estate crash, the housing market, it's simply going to get worse from here. We've already seen a 40% drop. I think the month of August and September were both post sub 4 million transactions. It is going to get tough. The longer we are above 7% interest rates, the longer uh, the and the worse it is going to get. We might reference the 53-year spreadsheet, which if you haven't gotten by now, what are you doing? You're just being lazy. I think it is very eye-opening to look at it and look at 1978, which is where interest rates started rising, and then calculate how many years it took back it took to get back to 1978. It is shocking for most people. We're going to talk to the three amigos because again, the crash is getting worse. But maybe, just maybe, it might be getting better if you know what you're doing. Matt, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing super awesome. Yes, the crash is getting worse. It, I mean, it is, it is getting bad, right? Not only are we seeing new listings thanks to Logan from Housing Wire at a historic low, with a big 10% drop week on week here recently. Uh, we're seeing days on market grow up. We're going to see days on market grow. We saw Case Schiller today. With prices up, you know, roughly a percent, right? 0.9 month on month, back to July, June, a peak of last year. So people are losing their mind. People don't understand supply and demand are two lines that can move. But dude, transactions, oh, it's going to get worse. Dion, what do you think? The crash is going to get worse. Well, I think there's two types of crashes going on. One is the one that people want to hear about the crash <laughs> in prices. The crash in prices is going to hit adjustable rate bad commercial debt, the syndications that are rolling over that were based on rent increases continuing for the next couple of years, like they were for the last couple of years. Yeah. So you'll see enough information on actual price crashes happening in commercial, which they just call real estate. Yeah. And then home prices that, and then even in the home price, if we see the luxury kind of take a hit and they'll say, Oh, prices are coming down. Those aren't the places we're investing in for rentals. So if you're waiting for those prices to come down to buy a rental, take a note. That's stupid. <laughs> Write that down. That's stupid. If you're hurrying, that's stupid too. So I'm not saying rush. I'm not saying wait. I'm just saying you want to hunt for the right deal. Um, and those deals are going to be, I think, harder and harder to find. But that doesn't mean they're impossible to find. Uh, and since they're harder and harder to find, less transactions. It's something we said, I think, about a year ago. Agents, mortgage brokers, people in the industry that where their livelihood depends on transactions, not so much the price of the sale, but that the transaction happens, should have a side hustle. Yeah, it's 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 going to get bad. Uh, I wasn't sure I was going to do this, but again, I think everybody needs to get this free, free spreadsheet. So let me just share it because I want to just highlight what I'm talking about. So uh, guys, you can see this, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So what I want to do is I want to go to 1978. So 1978, we have total transactions, which is new and existing home sales of 4.8 million. Just highlight that in yellow. Then what I want you to do is focus on the interest rate, which we'll make, I don't know, we'll make red. So what happened is interest rates start going up, right? Interest rates stayed above this number. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it was 14 oh years. <clears throat> Until 1991. We went the entire 80s with interest rates above 1978. That is shocking. Mm -hmm. But now look at this. Let me move this out of the way. <laughs> Transactions, 4.8. Look at when we get back there. <laughs> oh, my God. This is not good. Yeah, it was longer 1996 <clears throat> 18 years folks goldman sachs today talked about transactions not getting back to 2019 till 2027 they could be early this is this is this is almost 20 years there's a lot of stuff that happened between 1978 and 1996 i mean if this doesn't kick you in the stomach I don't know what you're doing. I mean, this is this is bad. Look at and again, back to the point that I think transactions get worse. They got they got worse like right out of the gate. Took a big drop, took another big drop, took another one. 
right? So there was four years before it hit bottom. And then it was just a slow grind sideways. So this crash that we are in is going to get worse. And it could take, it took 18 years to get back last time. I'm surprised Why? anybody was buying houses in 1996 <laughs> because all we kept hearing about was Y2K was going to end the world. <laughs> Computers Ooh. only have two digits to store the year. That's going to be the end of a century and all the nukes are going to go off. Well, and then, and then everybody got an amazing $100,000 a year job <laughs> adding yeah. two digits to everything. <laughs> I was one of those consultants. I spent a month in, or a month, month and a half in Europe. Yeah. I mean, I think when you when you look at the spreadsheet, you know, it, it does. It goes, you know, basically from nine and change up in, you know, 11, 12, 13, 16, and then back down kind of 13, 14, 13, 12. But then when it gets back down to 10, you know, so I you can kind of, for me, it's, uh, you know, kind of cutting the ends off the ham to get it to fit in your pan. Um, and what I mean by that is, is that, you know, you were really high out of those 14 years, you were really high for like two or three. But then it starts to come down and still 14 is high and 13 is high. But relatively speaking, now you're talking about a 10 and a 20% discount off a rate. Yeah. So there's so much in this that I want people to realize. First and foremost, Powell keeps saying higher for longer. Yeah. The market talks in quarters. That's right. That spreadsheet shows it could be years. years. Correct. Years. Correct. Correct. But here's the thing. This is where, and I know you and I differ on how we, how we feel about this stuff. Sure. This is where for me in adjustable rate debt, I don't want it to be a huge portion of my portfolio, but I still want to be doing transactions that are commercial in size, five units and greater. Mm -hmm. And so for me, seeing what the debt is now at, you know, eight and a half, nine. Yeah, nine. Yeah. If the numbers are working at nine, do I believe it can go to 10 or 12 or 11 in five or six years? I believe it's possible, but not probable. Sure. But if it does get there, I'm five years out. And at that point, I've gotten enough appreciation in the rents, not the value. Yeah, see, that we, I, I, so, because, I so disagree because of how far it's, Right, but because of how far it's traveled. I believe that it's not like roulette. Yeah, 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 yeah. One number has nothing to do with the next. True. It's not, True. It's not a roulette strategy. It True. is, we got it down as far as three and a half in most cases on commercial debt. Now we're at nine or nine and a half on some of that stuff. Yeah. If my numbers work, and I'm not talking about work like it's slightly better than the other deal in the market that I can get. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Work as in like I'm still 13, 14, 15%. I'm like, right. okay, I can have a five to seven year strategy on this, but that asset, I am likely principal paying down with additional profit. But again, so yeah, I get all that. You're yeah, a sophisticated do. operator, blah, blah, blah. Right. Sure. So you, you, you do you, uh -huh. but the people watching this, that may be shopping a commercial, cause I think there's going to be tremendous deals there. there will be. You can get fixed rate commercial debt. I talk to somebody every Thursday, velocity mortgage. Uh -huh. You can get 30 year fix. I have 30 year debt on apartments. Thanks to velocity mortgage. Yep. But what is yes. it now? But what is so it it's now? In the, it's nine today or nine something today. It's, 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 it's about, three quarters of a point higher than you can get a five-year arm for. I don't give a rat's ass. I'm calculating my purchase price at nine and a half. I'm getting 30 year money every time. Now, if that turns off and that part of the market, and I only have five, seven or 10 arms. Okay. But man, if I, if I have to pay an extra three quarters of a point, but I get 30 year fix all day. If that's the Delta, I completely agree. Okay. I just haven't seen that in the Delta in my deals. Okay, that's fine. That's all. Because that that rate, the buy down on that is a lot more expensive, sure. right? And so I can get buy down on the other rate. And so usually I'm seeing, and when you have a relationship with your bank and you're not a mortgage hooker, yeah. <laughs> um, you can, that was, that was for you, Dion. Um, but when you when you're not doing like that and you do have that relationship, I know that their margins are you know plus two point five, and I can yeah. get plus two point, and yeah. so I'm picking up fifty there, and then I can buy down another point, and so again I'm making it all work. But it, when yeah. it's all said and done, I'm two I'm two hundred basis points yeah. less. So you do have to be educated. It's just like the you know every um what like we covered in the first video, every single syndicator is not going bust. 
But many of them will need capital raises. Many of them will be operators that are thrown out. Many of them will have zero returns. And you're just hoping, hey, can I get my original equity out in five years? Hopefully I pray, you know, with no dividends for the next five years, but can I at least get my original out equity out? Maybe that's possible. But that's where it's like, it's just like anything. When you're an operator, you're looking at, you're looking at exactly what's going on in the field, right? It's like those teams that can't make those defensive adjustments, like the Steelers, mm-hmm. The Patriots for decades made those defensive adjustments in the second half. Right. Steelers didn't. Now send the hate. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the Lumberjack Landlord is a YouTube channel. You can find him on Instagram. If you're a Steeler fan, reach out to him. Don't bother putting <laughs> on my channel. I, I don't have an opinion. Uh, but Dion, we just talked about rates going up, staying higher for longer in years, not quarters. We talked about transactions not coming back to the previous peak for 18 years. Tell me why this could actually be a good thing. So two things are going to spike. And sometimes I think people don't realize the origin of something and they think it has a different purpose than it actually does. Here's a quick example, social security. Mm -hmm. If you ask the average person, what is social security? They'll say it's a safety net for people that get old and don't have a retirement. And that's not actually why social security was created. It was created in Germany because there was too many older people working and not enough jobs for the younger generation. So you had this clockwork clockwork orange kind of crazy young generation doing crazy things. So the, the German society said, hey, we're going to pay older people to leave the workforce so that younger people can have a job. So they think that Social Security is there to help older people, but really it was to help society get younger people active activities yeah. too. Yeah. So the things that are going to spike currently with this crash in transactions that is going to get worse. Mm-hmm. If you ask the average person, and I know, Matt, you watch my content I, sometimes. And I just made this video like a week or two ago. You want the, FHA, all the, <laughs> the FHA loan that came out, right? The, the FHA. Mm-hmm. If you ask the average person what Social Security does, they'll say it, it helps older people if they don't have a retirement. If you ask the average person what is the FHA loan, they're going to say it helps people get on the property ladder. It helps the first-time home buyer. That's not why it was created. It was actually created in 1934. Because we had a recession hitting where we had 2 million construction workers out of work. So the government said, we're going to spur the economy and help home builders build so that they can have a government-backed loan product to buy that house if you build it. Mm. So what the FHA loan does is it actually reduces the length of recession. So if you go 1948, 1958, 19, every time there's been a big recession, you've seen over a 5% spike in use of FHA loans. So as we're going into a recession where people might have worse credit, worse debt to income ratios, the loan option that becomes more attractive to the buyer is FHA. And you have competing um, goals here. You have the Fed going, we're going to raise rates to slow the economy. And then FHA is going to spike to spur the economy, which makes it worse. Hmm. So there's going to be more FHA buyers. The second thing that's going to spike as this crash in transactions gets worse, as Mike, you pointed out in the 80s, Interest rate spike to double digits stayed there for a decade, right? So what happened in 1983? The adjustable rate mortgage was introduced. There you go. So you're going to see, and Dave Ramsey actually got this right in a very recent video where he said uh, how stupid this is to do is to get an adjustable rate mortgage. We had 51% in 2007 that had adjustable rate mortgages. A large contributing factor to the housing crash was how many there were. There was a ton of other factors too. Mm-hmm. Well, since then, we had basically around 3%. Around 3% of home buyers had adjustable rate mortgages. From 2020 to 2022, that spiked up to 13%. 13% of people were having adjustable rate mortgages. It's yeah. gone back down. And I think this might be something where content creators like us are helping. We're talking about how stupid this is, not just us. There's bigger channels that are doing that too, the two and three million where they're saying it's dumb to have an adjustable rate. So it's gone from 13% back down to 8%. Hopefully it's going to trend lower than that. We're going to see FHA spike. I think we're going to see a bunch of people get adjustable rate mortgages who shouldn't Mm -hmm. because they're going to be told, oh, you'll be able to refinance in a couple of years when rates come back down. Because that worked out so great the last time. Yeah. The other thing excited about this theme you're going to see, and you've already seen it at uh, Rocket Mortgage, UWM, Zillow, and some states like Texas just announced these 1% down programs. You guys hear about these right now where I, I suspect uh, something, I think we talked about a year ago. Uh, I think something that's going to be pitched here very recently or very soon is the 40 year mortgage is the answer. Thousand percent. 
Yeah. It's coming, right? Absolutely. It's coming. One percent. I'm telling you, everything that they are going to do is to engineer what they want. Demand, out of the demand, demand, it's to, demand. It's to create demand. And here's the dumb part. There's no supply, dummy. It, yeah. What are you doing? Why are you goosing something that doesn't need goosing? You, we don't need it. What we need is incentives for builders to build affordable. I work with three different cities. And when I say work with them, I talk to the different officials in these cities. And I'm like, I want to do this project. But if I do this project, you're going to charge me $15,000 for an impact fee. You're going to charge me $9,000 per unit for a sewer hookup. While that's great for the city, how do you expect me to make the unit affordable? What if I promise you that I need to meet my bank requirement of 1.25 debt coverage, get to maybe 1.35. And if I do that, will you start relinquishing some of these horrible, crazy fees? Yeah. That's why, that's why builders maximize what they put on the lot because it costs them the same thing for an impact fee for a 500, for a $5,000 or 5,000 square foot house or a 2,000 square foot house. It costs them the same. It's the same impact fee. And people that are sitting there, oh, housing's unaffordable. Yet, do you realize how expensive it is to build? Yeah. It's 50 grand before you're breaking dirt. Yeah. No, I, I I tried to build something, I guess, about a year ago and went to the city and they wanted almost, I think it was 80 grand and no guarantee of approval. None. I'm like, no, 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 thanks. I'm good. I'll keep I it as 10, is. I lost 10,000 bucks on a permit. Yeah. 10 grand. They denied it. And I said, "You, I, all I'm looking for is advice back on what we need to change. No, we're outward denying it. You're going to have to reapply. It was nine months and $10,000. This was three or four years ago. And I was like, if you think you're getting another crack at 10 grand of mine, zero chance of that happening. Yeah. Zero. Yes. And I sold, and I'm selling the house, period. There you go. So at the end of the day, the trend, the housing crash is going to get worse. It is. Uh, a lot of the uh, government, uh, whatever you want to call it, will be all demand based, not supply based. I I could I couldn't believe that I've looked at that fifty three year spreadsheet a thousand times I don't know, a couple hundred times I'm still shocked that it took eight years or whatever it was for the rates to go down and then it took eighteen years for transactions to match it so again higher for longer not quarters years and then the transaction crash that Goldman says is going to be twenty twenty seven it might be twenty thirty seven right pretty crazy Dion uh -huh. bring us home. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I want to talk to the people that started watching those idiot crash bros. I want to talk to them because they started watching them in 2020 and 2021. I want to talk to them in 2027 and see how life is as a renter. You're going to lose six. You lost years, years. And you thought that it was, it's coming tomorrow. The crash is coming tomorrow. Be ready. No, it's not. It wasn't. People that are actually in the business that know what we're talking about because we've lived it for 20 years, 22 years, 12 years. We've lived it. So yeah. enjoy. I mean, that's what you put your faith and stock in someone that had no idea what they were talking about. That's a bad idea. They had no experience. Matt, where can people find you? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and Instagram. Drop your hate there. Yeah. <laughs> Dion, uh, closing thoughts and bring us home. So uh, the last thing to wrap up with is inflation, 1% um, mortgage options like with Zillow's program, 40 year mortgage. It seems like the best position to be in is going to be owning real estate because what's going to happen to prices when all of those things happen? More demand from 1% home ownership, uh, lower payment from 40 year mortgages, which means prices can go up because homeowners chase payment, investors chase profit. Matt's point of, I wish we could talk to the people who are watching the crash bus. Yeah, they're going to lose years if they wait till 26, 27 or whatever. But think of the hundreds of thousands of dollars they've lost just by not owning from 2020 until oh. now. Not just the cash flow, but the crazy appreciation. And it isn't getting any better. No. So you can find me right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom, where I'm not telling you to hurry and buy and I'm not telling you to wait and buy. I'm no. just telling you that when you find the right deal, you need to take it because no one else can tell you. No one else can tell you what's going to happen in a year or two years. And whatever's going to happen to the market doesn't matter if you found the great deal today.
yeah, do the work, folks. Make no promises. Uh, but I can guarantee this. If you don't do the work and you sit on the sidelines, you're going to get what you get. And uh, frankly, you're going to deserve it. Thanks, guys. Take care.